All right, everyone, let's get started here. Uh, it's Damon here calling from Rexel. I uh, hope everyone is doing well on this Tech Tuesday. Um, today we have a presentation from Frank Hill uh, and a Q&A session for, with Mark Ewing, uh, who's a channel sales manager, and then uh, Muncie Slack, who's the systems engineer for Stratus. And uh, we're gonna be covering the topic of leveraging virtualization and thin clients at the industrial edge. Uh, I did want to let everybody know that this session is being recorded. Um, so please, before we get started, uh, mute your lines um, and save any questions. We're gonna have a live Q&A session at the end with uh, Monty and Mark. Um, so with that said, we're gonna get started here. Um, I'd like to introduce Frank Hill. Well, hello. Welcome to the Stratus webinar on leveraging virtualization and thin clients at the industrial edge. Uh, my name is Frank Hill. I manage the Rockwell Global Partnership and have the pleasure of working with our Rockwell distributor partners. Today's uh, session is hosted by Rexel. Rexel is one of our top uh, distribution partners. They've been fully trained and certified to be able to deliver and architect Stratus as systems and solutions for you. So they, they are truly one of my, my favorite and top uh, partners in this ecosystem. As a brief background, Stratus has been making fault tolerant computers for over uh, 40 years now. We have uh, been working with many different types of industries over the years. One of them you see on the screen here is the credit card authorization and financial services industry. Companies like Citigroup and American Express rely on the same technology that we're gonna talk about today that has now grown into uh, our largest industry segment, which is industrial automation and edge computing. A lot going on in the world of industrial automation, as you very well know. Digital transformation, IIoT, and other technologies are altering architectures and computing in general. Uh, some of the big consulting firms that cover the manufacturing industry include Gartner and IDC. Here's just little snippets that kind of indicate the size and, and uh, magnitude of the changes that are occurring in the industry today. Gartner says that 75% of data will be created and processed outside the data center or cloud by 2022. That's only a, you know, in the next couple of years, we're moving from less than 10% of the processing being done at the edge to 75%. That's a dramatic change. IDC kind of backs up that, that idea with their prediction of 50% of new IT infrastructure being deployed at the edge by 2023. Again, a, a, a dramatic change in where computers are being deployed and all happening as we speak and over the next couple of years. IDC also indicates that edge applications will increase by 800% in that same time frame. That's a lot more applications that you're having to deal with out in the field uh, than just uh, a few years ago. Google is addressing this shift in architectures uh, across their product lines. One example is with the Rockwell process team, uh, the plant PAX, uh, which is the name of the Rockwell solution for process industry. Uh, they've done several things. They've uh, created a software uh, consolidated product called PASC or PASS Consolidated, which is a single ISO file uh, with several applications designed to support and run smaller uh, locations. This allows uh, these small locations to be able to divide up the processing that would have normally been done at level three or four of the Purdue chart. They've also uh, teamed up with Stratus 
and we've done a lot of testing together on, a, on bundled solutions where Stratus is providing small, reliable, and supportable compute to host that, uh, that application set for the edge. One of the, the key technologies that we're seeing is uh, the, the growth in, in hardware, the growth in, in performance capabilities of edge computers. Uh, CPUs, memory, disk capacity are all continuing to grow. And this brings up a key uh, technology that really needs to be considered when you move applications out to the edge. And that technology is virtualization. Ten years ago, when I'd be presenting at a, a Rockwell event, I would oftentimes ask uh, customers how, you know, to raise their hands if they were using virtualization uh, for their industrial automation applications. Well, very few 10 years ago were, were doing that. You would have a, a 10 or 20 percent of the crowd raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm using virtualization. That has changed a lot over, over the last 10 years. Today, everyone is using virtualization. If you're in a large plant, plant or have IT staff around to support it. But as we see with, uh, with the uh, predictions of edge computing growth, those servers and systems today that are being deployed are not always in locations where they have IT support or a clean room environment for a, for a traditional server. But the benefits and value proposition of server virtualization still exists. Now, just in brief review here of the technology, what is server virtualization? Well, it's basically a technology that allows you to take an individual computer and, and, and run multiple applications in virtual machines or virtual containers. This allows you to run a lot of different applications without any conflict happening between those applications and take better use of the underlying performance that, that's come with the new computer hardware, multi-core processors and such. In the old days, you would have just a single copy of Windows, and you'd have only one or two applications, and you had the, uh, had the worry that they're going to conflict with each other and cause technical problems. So look at a modern information infrastructure for edge computing. The first technology that you need to consider is, is sticking with and leveraging the benefits that industrial folks have, have come to recognize in virtualization. Virtualization allows you to take that single computer and add a whole lot of different applications to it. It allows you to support older operating systems that may not be supported on your native hardware. Think about like Windows 2000. You can't run that natively on a, on a PC today as a modern processor, but you can run it in a virtual environment. And this will future-proof you in that regard as well. As you put in a Windows 2012 or 2016 operating system today, 10 years from now, if it's virtualized, you'll still be able to run that operating system. Virtualization simplifies uh, administration functions as well. Patching becomes easier, remote support becomes easier, backup and disaster recovery options uh, abound that, that are not available if you just implement software directly on a, a Windows PC box. Virtualization for me, that the biggest benefit of all is that it promotes innovation. Innovation in that you can, if you have capacity on the machine that you build in ahead of time, when you want to deploy that new application, you can do it without having a big project to implement new servers and software and, and, and environments and other infrastructure that would go with it. Instead, you can just simply add another virtual machine and, and innovate and add value proposition to your, to your environment. Another technology that is fundamental and has, has become very popular in large infrastructure, manufacturing infrastructure, is thin client. 
Thin Client basically eliminates all the software from those PCs off your shop floor and allows it to run on the server in a remote desktop server uh, VM. That those, those images now can be managed and be more secure. You have hardened uh, thin client hardware out on the shop floor only without an operating without a Windows operating system so it becomes better cyber secure uh, you have thin manager from Rockwell that allows you to manage the content that any role any person with a particular role can get access to the content that they need again providing even better better security and when you want to make updates to all those clients out in the field, it's a centralized location where it can save a lot of time in, instead of having to take uh, software out to individual workstations to get it fixed up and, and repaired. So virtualization, thin client, key technologies to take with you when you go to the edge. Now, when you, when you put all these applications on a single computer, you have to kind of worry a little bit about whether that computer uh, will stop working. Because if it does, you're gonna lose all those applications. So in the world of IT, in the world of office and, and data center kind of applications, a very traditional way to increase the availability of your virtualized environment is to use a technology called VMware High Availability Clustering. As you can see here from the picture, VMware clustering requires multiple computers, and it, it allows you to deploy virtual machines across these different boxes. The challenge, though, in an edge environment is that when one of these nodes fail, uh, you're going to have to uh, go out to the site to repair it with somebody with technical expertise around virtualization. The other challenge with this in an edge environment, especially in the industrial world, is the mechanism for failure and recovery. If a node fails, all the virtual machines that were running on that node disappear. Uh, the, the data that was in transit is lost. And then there's a restart of those VMs on a, one of the remaining nodes. That restart can take up to 15 minutes. So if your HMI is, is dependent on that server, it could go dark, literally dark, for 15 minutes. So data loss potential and especially complexity uh, and lack of resources at the edge make this availability solution difficult to implement and, and uh, manage and sustain at the edge. Stratus has a uh, a different way of doing things for uh, a number of years now. Uh, the Stratus platform is built with a technology called fault tolerance. That's different than high availability. Fault tolerance means that within the Stratus platforms, you have a complete set, redundant set of hardware. And that redundant set of hardware is locked together, locked together at the processor level. That means that the CPUs in one unit are synchronous with the CPUs in the, another unit. Memory and disk are also synchronized. That means when you load an operating system on a Stratus box, like, like uh, virtualization, it's running on two sets of hardware at once. So you can deploy any application from Rockwell or Microsoft or any other application and it will be running in two places at once. Now the fault tolerant redundancy, what that means to you uh, is that if any part fails in one of these uh, computers from Stratus, there is no impact to the running of the application. It simply continues to run. The application won't even know that there's been a failure of a hardware component. So Stratus provides something that's very unique for the industrial space. It provides uh, a system that is easy to deploy, it's fault tolerant in its availability, and it has a very long uh, support life. We have Stratus FT server customers who are literally running their systems for 15 years and they're still running fault tolerant 
and they're still supported by Stratus. That matches up with your time frame in, a, in an industrial environment, especially an edge environment, which is very unlikely to be tech refreshed every three or four years. When, when, when we're working with uh, IT organizations like uh, in the financial services world, they look at downtime as number of nines. So if you had two nines of availability, that would be 99% uh, uptime for the server. 99% uptime uh, translates into over three days of unplanned downtime for the year. When you look at the uh, options you have out there for for server uh, server technologies to deploy, one of them would be a, like a VMware clustered solution, which is traditionally considered to be four nines of availability, 99.99% available. That leaves almost an hour of unplanned downtime, which may occur in a single instance of downtime or over multiple instances of, of lesser time on average. Another uh, uh, solution that people have looked at in the industrial space has been cloud computing. Cloud computing uh, is you know, typically advertised as having a 99.95 availability goal. Not a, not a guarantee, but a goal. So if you have that Amazon cloud go down for a week, there's really no impact to, to, to Amazon or the service provider. It's just going to impact you. Stratus, on the other hand, we've for uh, 40 years, we've been uh, monitoring our systems. We monitor them live, and we can achieve uh, and have achieved almost seven nines of availability. You can actually go to our website and see a live meter of the availability that Stratus provides to their customers. So modern edge computing, another factor along with having virtualization, thin client, fault tolerant computing, is the ability to support and sustain the environment over the long term. And that means uh, to monitor the system. I actually went out to a water co company and asked them where they um, kept their servers. They opened up the closet door. I looked down. There's a red light blinking on one of their, their disk drives. And come to find out that disk drive had failed, but the customer, even though it was in RAID redundant array, they had no idea that they needed to replace the hard drive. When you look at a redundant solution, even a fault tolerant stratus solution, you have to be ready and able to replace components when they fail in a timely fashion to prevent catastrophic failure. So what Stratus implemented many years ago was the ability to monitor our systems remotely. So we, all Stratus systems can be connected to the cloud. We also have implemented great monitoring capabilities locally as well. You can either get an email alert from Stratus uh, system on your plant floor, or you can use our OPC uh, capabilities to get an alert and alarm directly to your HMI. What that triggers, if there's any issue with your Stratus system, is you're going to get a notification from Stratus, and if it's a part failure, you'll get a replacement component. The replacement components are all designed to be user replaced and hot swappable. That means, as you can see in the little picture here on an FT server, that the parts are actually held in with a thumb screw. So to re re repair a CPU or a DIM chip, you're not having to open up the cabinet. You're not having to do anything technical. You're simply unthumb screwing the bad part with an indicator light on, sliding it out, sliding in the new component, and it will automatically detect it and incorporate that component back into the Stratus system, all while still running your applications. So what Stratus does here in our support model is give you the longevity so that you can uh, keep those systems up and running. Stratus will maintain the part stock for you. 
You have 24 uh, by seven access to a Stratus support engineer directly as a phone call. You don't go through a phone menu and all the parts are hot pluggable. For the topic of today is virtualization and thin clients for the edge. I just wanted to give you a closer picture and a little a uh, few more details on the ZTC Edge solution. Stratus launched this uh, this version, this hardened version of our platform uh, about a year and a half ago, and there's been great market adoption. Uh, we've had some great customer successes, and I'll share a few of those in a in, a, in another slide. This this uh, industrial PC format uh, comes preloaded with the Stratus availability and virtualization mm -hmm. software. That means that you get a six-step installation guide that takes less than 30 minutes and your system will be ready for importation or deployment of virtual machines. So it's very easy to deploy, very easy to set up. It comes with health monitoring and the long uh, solution life that you'd expect from Stratus. And you can, you can run applications in fault-tolerant mode. And this all has the industrial uh, uh, specifications that you're going to need to be able to run stuff on the DIN rail or uh, wall mounted in remote locations. As you can see here, the ZTC Edge mounted in a, DIN, in a on a DIN rail in a control panel uh, it allows you to uh, not have a lot of air conditioning. You can go from minus 40 to 60 degrees C. Uh, we are coming out with Class 1 Div 2 uh, certification as well to uh, allow you to put this in, uh, in other environments that require that uh, specification. To share here a little bit about what fault tolerance means for your architecture. So what you're seeing here is the, the Rockwell Automation Redundant Thin Manager Architecture. And you'll notice here there's redundant HMI servers, there's redundant uh, RDS servers for failover capabilities, redundant domain controllers. So in, in essence, you if you deployed it on just standard PCs individually, you could have up to seven uh, computers running your thin manager redundantly. Rockwell has another texture slide where they show what Stratus deployment looks like for Thin Manager. So a virtualized uh, redundant solution for Thin Manager includes a single uh, uh, directory server, a single VUSE, a single Thin Manager RDS server. It's, uh, it's very important when you get out to the edge of the environment to make things simple for the operators and the administrators of the system. And one of the things that Fault Tolerance does is remove some of the software architecture um, complexity. Stratus for, for many years has known that the number one reason for downtime is complexity. It's human error in a complex system. So by incorporating uh, a fault tolerant piece of hardware that is self-aware and, and self-healing when you plug in a new part without having to reload software and without having to have a lot of software complexity as far as the architecture, it can mean all the difference in the world for sustainability. To point out in the uh, solution portfolio that Stratus offers through uh, the Rockwell channel, uh, that we do offer a single node uh, ZTC Edge. And this is because we found that with a lot of our machine builder uh, customers, where they're putting out a lot of different types of machines for different customers, they're really wanting to have a common way of deploying software, where some of their customers will want a single node without redundancy because you know it's not that critical. Uh, they they can they can do that with Stratus in this wide portfolio that addresses a lot of different needs. Also, by the way, if if a customer deploys a single node ZTC. They can always add another node and it will simply uh, update and provide availability through that redundancy at any time. You have to guess as to which platform you need to buy from Stratus uh, for your project. We have uh, Rockwell sizing tools that are available 
You can download the, the sizing tool from ProposalWorks, from Stratus.com, uh, or, you know, even better yet, get your uh, Rexel uh, solution architect involved along with the Stratus uh, engineer, and we'll help you uh, figure out the best solution for your, your particular need. Since this is a webinar series where there's a, a wide range of different customers, let me just say that Stratus serves almost every in the segment of the industrial space. So having just a single uh, example probably doesn't do it justice. Every segment in the industrial space requires computers, right? Well, so I've, I've created a couple of exa uh, slide examples here uh, showing industry segments. So in this case, oil and gas, I've got some logos up on the screen showing uh, Stratus uh, uh, partners uh, from, from oil platforms out in the Gulf of, and out in Nigeria and off the, off the coast of Nigeria to compressor stations uh, with Alliance Pipeline. Uh, we have a great compressor station case study with, uh, with Columbia Pipeline. They were uh, purchased by TC Energy or TransCanada, if you know them by that name. You can look up the Columbia Pipeline video case study up on our website. Uh, Land-based terminals, sea-based terminals, and downstream Valero uh, for uh, refining, even local gas distribution. This is Washington Gas in Washington, D.C. area. Uh, use Stratus systems for, for their availability. Uh, Southern Cal Gas recently became a Stratus uh, customer as well. And chemical plants that use feeder stock from oil and gas are uh, part of the process space that Stratus serves. Another uh, industry segment for Stratus that's very, where Stratus is very popular is water wastewater. You have a lot of resources here that you can look for examples and customer testimonials uh, of, of implementations. You know, we, at this last year, uh, uh, PSUG, the process user group for Rockwell, we presented with the city of Lima, uh, Ohio, and we have developed a video case study directly from them uh, talking about their implementation. Three Rivers Water in, in Washington State, they, they utilize the plant PAX virtual templates, Stratus, uh, computer, and running uh, thin clients with uh, thin manager uh, on them. So there's a lot of great water wastewater. You know, these water wastewater oftentimes do not have a lot of IT personnel, at least not IT personnel that are around 24 by 7 to take care of computer problems, right? So operational simplicity is key for them. Another big one for Stratus is food and bev and life sciences. In the interest of time, let me just share a kind of a unique value proposition that we have in the world of life sciences. So first and foremost, a life science regulated company built and making a product doesn't want to lose any data. So fault tolerance becomes a critical uh, capability in, in their environments. Another really unique uh, value proposition for Stratus in life sciences is this idea of commercial off-the-shelf solutions. So when you're in a, the a life science environment, you, and when you build your own solution for availability, you have to do a lot of documentation, a lot of testing. It can add up to hundreds of pages of documents when you build that clustered solution to validate that the failover will work appropriately. And then anytime there's a failure in one of those components and you replace it, again, you have to go through documentation. But on the other hand, commercial off-the-shelf is handled a little differently. So in other words, when they're buying a Stratus server and it comes in as a fully baked solution, and they trust that Stratus failover and or fault tolerance works, no failover, uh, and when we send them a new part for a failed component, the Stratus system itself is checking that, that to validate that that component is exactly the same, the firmware is exactly the same, and then reincorporated it into the system, that saves a lot of documentation. So life sciences is a great fit for a Stratus uh, solution. 
industry segment that's uh, uh, been very excited about the ZTC solution is the machine builder OEM market space. A lot is going on in the OEM market space in that their business models are changing. They're moving to some of them to subscription models, which means that they're uh, having to support their systems in the field, not just for one year, but for many years. In fact, a lot of the OEM partners that we're uh, working with are wanting to build in uh, services as a revenue stream for multiple years. That means they need to support the computing that goes along with their systems. And that computing has to now support data analytics and other applications like the software innovation suite that's being deployed on these systems. So they need more compute, they need it to be simple, need it to last for a very long time, and they need remote capabilities. I hope those. Well, I appreciate you guys staying uh, and listening to the Stratus message. Uh, there are options for you if you would like to get more information on this topic. Stratus.com forward slash RA provides our sizing tool for Rockwell and other video case studies you can explore. We are always available to schedule a webinar uh, for you to go into more technical depth on a solution. And we have a demo equipment available as well that you can work with Rexel to get a hold of. Whether it's a ZTC or an FT server, uh, we have equipment that can be utilized even in POCs uh, to give a full value proposition for your digital transformation project. Thank you so much. Stay safe. All right, thanks, Frank. Um, so for those of you, we're going to open the lines now for some questions. Uh, that presentation was by Frank Hill. It was pre-recorded, actually, because Frank uh, had a conflict with today. But I think he did a great job kind of capturing everything for you. Um, on the line, we do have uh, Mark Ewing and Munzee Slack, um, both representing Stratus. Um, so if anybody has a question, please feel free to unmute your lines and ask away. Um, I'm going to go to the chat right now. Um, David, David Tappan, uh, you had a question here about showing the uh, previous slide on the thin clients and the panel view. Um, I actually have that slide, slide 16, marked down for you. So with that being said, um, I'll send that over to you uh, as soon as we're done here so you can have a closer look. Um, I did personally have a question um, for Mark and Muncie. Um, just real quickly on, on the notifications. Um, how do the notifications work if there isn't an outside connection? Hey, this is Muncie. Um, so there's a, a lot of, and I guess we're talking about FT server specifically, ZTC both, uh, or just in general? I would just say in general at this point. Okay, um, so they're similar, but so I'll address them though individually. Um, the starting with FT server, if you don't allow outbound connections, uh, FT server has the ability to uh, deploy or, or for us to, to include uh, an OPC UA server component. Uh, so if you've got an HMI that can receive uh, OPC data, uh, then you can get information uh, about its health through that. It's, it's uh, not extremely robust. It's basically just a healthy, not healthy type of scenario. But in the event something happens to it, you'll see a, a, a flag, however you define that flag in your HMI. Uh, then, uh, it, And once you see that, then you would give us a call. Um, the other ways that the FT server can handle it is through uh, emails. Um, if you've got access to an email server inside the environment uh, or SNMP traps. So if you, if you do get SNMP trap data, uh, if you've got a, a collector for that, then you can use that. Um, so those are typically the internal notification uh, options that you have for FT server. Uh, ZTC is similar. Um, the, the difference is that the OPC uh, server component inside, Z, inside ZTC, a lot of acronyms here, um, is very robust. It has a whole lot of information and you can um, basically point your HMI at it and, and gather processor information, me memory information, VM information, all kinds of stuff. Uh, through the OPC UA uh, server component in, in ZTC. 
Um, we also have REST API. So if you've got a web-based uh, type of uh, um, monitoring tool or, or something that's a little more IT-centric using REST APIs, then we have a fully baked REST API uh, uh, system that's inside of ZTC. And then, of course, SNMP traps are also available um, uh, for that. Uh, so those are the two predominant um, or, or the, the, the ways that both of those products can uh, phone home internally as opposed to sending it directly to us uh, if you've got out from our connections. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, one more question coming through on the chat lines. Uh, is an annual service agreement required? Yes, it is. Um, we've got uh, varying levels of support um, that you can that you can get, uh, but but yes, in order to to maintain the system and to get updates to the uh, the firmware and the uh, base the bare metal operating systems, uh, you'll need an annual service agreement to go with that. Um, and uh, the benefit there, though, is that once if as long as you're under maintenance then any failures that you have during that uh, maintenance period uh, are fully covered. So you get a replacement node uh, or crew, depending on the product you have, uh, as often as you need it. So you could have a failure you know, once a week and we're gonna send you the replacement uh, component necessary. Now, that said, um, obviously if you have a failure that often, we're gonna wanna know why. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll right. be doing a lot of research to figure it out. Um, but that said, that, that that's it's really important that you have that annual service agreement so that you can um, maintain operations. Uh, it's it's pretty critical. Okay, thank you for your question, Erica. Any other questions now for Muncie or Mark? Oh, here's one coming in from Bruce Cree. The cost differential between a traditional server deployment and Stratus. Um, just so I make sure that I understand the um, the question. Uh, when you say traditional server deployment, I'm assuming you're you're referring to um, two Dells and a storage array and clustering, not just a single Dell. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. According to Bruce. Sorry, sorry. I'm reading the chat. So yeah, so, yeah, I've got it. That's, uh, <laughs> that works fine. Um, yeah. So, so total cost of ownership is a big deal here. And so, if you if you're looking at a Dell clustered solution, um, if you go by VMware's re recommendations, you're going to have three nodes. Uh, you'll have shared storage, and you'll have a a switched environment, uh, both on the storage switches as well as network switches. Um, then you have to license each individual node with VMware and it's got to be Essentials Plus or higher, which, which is the, the more robust version of VMware uh, in order to get vMotion and HA. Those are the two components required for a VMware cluster. Um, so you've got three nodes, shared storage, switching, um, multiple VMware licenses. You've got multiple Microsoft server licenses because you've got to, if you say we've got a six VM environment, uh, you've got to have licensing for all six VMs on each node. So that's three Windows Standard Edition licenses for your six VMs, and you've got three on node one, three on node two, three on node three. That allows you what's called license mobility, and that Microsoft requires those licenses so that you can move the VMs between the uh, cluster nodes at will. Uh, if you don't get that, if you don't license it that way, then you are stuck there for 90 days um, and you cannot move them again per Microsoft licensing requirements. So you don't have the flexibility needed if something fails uh, again. Um, and so you, you've got to have that license mobility. And then depending on the applications you're running, you may or may not have multiple license requirements in clustering, but a lot of times you will. So you've got to take all that into consideration from an initial cost standpoint for what a cluster truly costs. It's not just the hardware, but it's the hardware and licensing that goes into that. And then you compare that to an FT server, um, which is a single platform. Microsoft and VMware recognize it as a single node. So you need the FT server. You've already got internal storage. We don't use external storage, so you don't need all the, the switching uh, to, to make that happen either. 
Um, and then because we're a single node, you have one copy of VMware, and we typically go with the VMware Essentials Kit, which is free, uh, just has a part of an annual maintenance to keep it updated. And then you only have one copy of all the Microsoft licenses because we're not moving from node to node. We're all on one platform and we're doing everything at the same on the same side or at both sides at the same time. So you've, you've cut your licensing uh, down by half or a third, depending on, on your cluster design. And then you only need one copy of the, of the uh, software applications. Um, now, if you want application redundancy, uh, say you want uh, redundant HMI, then you may have uh, VUSE uh, in, in two different VMs to replicate each other. Um, but that's not a requirement. That, that is an option some, some take. So uh, if you look at that comparison of the total cost of ownership with um, the FT server, single set of licenses, clustering, multiple sets of licensing, uh, and then you look at cost of downtime because in a cluster, when it fails, you've got to restart everything. Uh, so you've got a gap in your, your application availability, whereas you don't in a Stratus. We're, it, we're on par uh, equal to that cost uh, outlay um, at, at, at a minimum. And good chances are if, if you're doing something that uh, has batch processes or raw material cost or you have a, a, a downstream problems whenever a failure occurs, we're actually going to be less when you look at this from a total cost. Now, I know it's a much longer answer than you probably anticipated uh, when you asked, but I think you got to have the conversation about what you're truly paying for a clustered solution versus uh, just the hardware outlay that, that you may see uh, on paper. Does that, does that answer the question appropriately? Is there anything that I missed? Yeah, and Muncie, I would say the other aspect of that is the uh, the refresh rate as far as uh, replacing those servers. Um, you, you take that into account as well. If you look at uh, typical uh, Dell or HP, you're, you're refreshing those servers every three to five years uh, versus, uh, as Frank said in the uh, in the presentation, where you know we've got Stratus service uh, that uh, you know eight, ten, twelve years. Uh, even longer in some cases uh, where they're running and you don't have to replace those servers. Yeah, very good point. All right, Muncie, perfect. Yep. Any guarantee of parts available and are parts covered in the service agreement? Yes, they are. So as long as you're under maintenance, um, again, uh, if, if uh, and it's an annual maintenance, you can prepay through your three, four, five years if you want to up front um, to sort of shield yourself from any price increases and, and bring it all into the uh, initial cost of, of purchase if you need to. But that said, uh, yeah, we will replace the crew. Uh, you know, and as Frank said, you're going to get one of two parts, um, either the whole crew or, or just a storage, uh, storage drive. Um, and that's always covered uh, as long as the server's under maintenance, you're getting whatever you need to update it and, and to fix it. And we get we, we as long as you're under maintenance, we guarantee that we'll have the park. So whatever it is that you deploy on day one is the same thing you'll get uh, in year 10 uh, if you have a failure. So um, that's what that annual maintenance covers and that's what the guarantee is. I see okay. one from from Derek is Stratus in the IAV tool. We are. Um, I, I would recommend that you use the I, you can use the IAV tool to configure a Stratus and build it, but I would trust the configuration of it. Um, but I don't know that I trust the pricing. Sometimes that that may or may not be right. You'll still want to, to send that in to, uh, to Rexel or whomever uh, and get it to us so that we can get a, a formal quote to get uh, exact pricing. It'll give you a ballpark, but um, not necessarily perfect. Yeah, and the reason for that is just the, you know, we're, we're subject to price fluctuation in the computer space, just like anybody else from a component standpoint. So uh, uh, just double check that with uh, with Rexel. Mark, we have another watching the chat. You see one that popped up from David. Yeah, yeah. What is the Rockwell Stratus relationship coming in from David? Mark, you got that? So Stratus is, a, is an Encompass partner with Rockwell. So uh, Stratus has been an Encompass partner for, uh, for roughly 10 years now. Uh, so uh, we are in the Encompass program as a partner. Okay. Any other questions coming through? 
see none through the chat. Any other questions? All right. Looks like we are good to go. Um, guys, I really appreciate your time. Everyone on the line, I, I thank you for your time today. We do hope you find value in these webinars. Um, we're doing them every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, and then also following up on Thursday, we've done it for the West Coast at 1 p.m. So if you can't make the Tuesday one, we do have it on uh, repeat again on Thursday at 1 for the West Coast. Um, next week, we'll actually have Evolution of Secure Connect. Uh, featuring our very own Derek Sorflayton. So if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to ask. If not, thank you everyone and have a good day. Take care everyone. Thank you.